brutal Barracuda, a sniper elite channel. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So, about a year ago, I did a video on the top 10 things I want to see in Sniper Elite 5 and got some great feedback in the comments section from you all adding your own interesting ideas. I'll link the video on the screen now so go check that out if you haven't already. I'll also leave a link in the description. Anyway, I thought what I'd do is pick 10 of those viewer suggestions to talk a little more about. So sit back, chill out and let me know in the comments section if you agree or disagree with these 10 Sniper Elite 5 viewer suggestions. First up, and in no particular order, we have Dan Sobel, who said, I would like to see realistic logic in Sniper Elite 5. Like when you shoot someone in the arm, they won't be able to fire their weapon, or if shot in the leg, they won't be able to walk or run. Now, I really like this idea, and it has been slightly touched on before back in the original Sniper Elite, often when wounding an enemy in the leg or arm, they would slowly limp away. I think Sniper Elite 5 should bring this back, but take it even further. With the current system, shooting them in the leg might incapacitate them. This means they will go down, call for help, and another soldier will run over, pick them up, carry them away, and heal them. Or if left long enough, they'll just bleed out and die. But that's as far as it goes when the enemies are shot. But I think it should be changed. So when shooting an enemy in the leg, if it doesn't incapacitate them, it should at least cause them to slowly limp or crawl to cover because currently the incapacitation mechanic has to be the most random mechanic in the game. One shot to the leg may incapacitate one soldier and not another. It's just random. Although I will say a shot to the leg will incapacitate enemies more often than not. So, shots to the feet and legs should make enemies crawl or limp to cover with reduced movement. Shots to the arm should maybe disable that arm, forcing enemies to shoot one-handed, reducing accuracy or switching to their sidearm. This would also be a great chance to introduce a new enemy type maybe. Wounded soldiers could try to limp their way over to a medic perhaps to get fixed up. But one thing I'm certain of is enemies should react accordingly depending on where they are shot. Next up, El Wago says, I'd like to see visible bullet wounds, but not like the ones from Sniper Elite V2. Now this is an interesting one and one that many people mention. In Sniper Elite 1, we had visible bullet wounds. They weren't amazing and would only appear sometimes, but they were in there. They improved on these slightly in Sniper Elite V2 by having a smaller entry wound and a larger exit wound, but again like in Sniper Elite 1, they would only appear sometimes. But instead of improving upon them further in future games, they decided to just scrap the idea after V2. But what makes this even more interesting is the fact that Rebellion themselves talk about how they want people to see the real damage that these weapons do to the human body, yet they don't let us see the after effects on the dead enemies anymore. The damage done by a sniper bullet is considerable, and so we're not flinching away from that, and we're showing to the player what it is that they are doing. What makes this even more frustrating is in Sniper Elite V2, they even dabbled with dismemberment a little bit. When sniping, it was possible to shoot enemies' fingers off. These wounds were even visible on the dead enemy's hands. But instead of improving upon these features for one reason or another, they just decided to bin them. My initial thought was maybe they removed these features to keep the age rating lower, but no, all the sniper elites have the exact same age rating. I just wish that instead of binning bullet wounds and dismemberment from V2, that they would improve upon them instead. If they really want to show the damage that these weapons do to the human body, bring these features back. Next up, we have Kevin Plusky, who says, Regarding your request to make it even more difficult, remove the scope glare that instantly gives away enemy sniper positions, or at least make it more realistic. Now, for me, this isn't about making the game harder. It's just about fixing what I think was a step back from Sniper Elite 3. I think most would agree that Sniper Elite 4 improves upon Sniper Elite 3 in almost every way, but one of the areas that Sniper Elite 3 has the upper hand is with the way the sniper scope glint has been implemented. In Sniper Elite 4, when a sniper is facing you, it's like he's turned on a torch to let us know where he is. Literally, all snipers just give away their positions so easily. A quick rework could be to revert back to the way Sniper Elite 3 dealt with the scope glint. It would flash for a split second then disappear, just enough for us to know a sniper is about, but not enough to pinpoint his exact location. 
forcing us to equip the binoculars and actually search for him. Trying to locate enemy snipers was much more fun and engaging in Sniper Elite 3, so a quick fix would be to revert back to that system. Personally, I like the way Sniper Elite 3 did scope blint, so I'd be happy with that if they don't want to have to faff around with the more complex systems of a long fix, which would include taking into account where the light source is coming from, the direction the sniper is looking, and where Carl is standing. I do like that the glint feature is in the game, but now it just needs to be either improved upon or changed back to the arguably better Sniper Elite 3 version. The next suggestion is from one curmudgeon who says, the thing I'd like to see in Sniper Elite 5 is random multiple start and finish locations for a level. Now Sniper Elite 4 already gives us lots of different ways to tackle a mission, and on certain missions like San Salini or Abrunza Monastery, we are given multiple extraction points to choose from when finishing a level, which is great. It allows players more freedom when choosing how to tackle a mission, but what if we also had multiple insertion points on each level, giving players even more choice in how to take on the next mission? I'm not sure about the idea of random entry points, because if you don't get the entry point you want, you will be forever restarting the mission until you get the entry point that you prefer. But if you give players the choice of where to start, that would be a great way of improving upon the player's freedom to complete a level in any way they wish. San Salini is a great example. Instead of starting where we always start, Imagine if we was able to control Carl's boat manually, we would have been able to land on any beach of our choice to start the mission. Or what would be really great, as Ken Spencer suggested, is if we could perhaps parachute in at the start of certain missions, allowing us to land wherever we like. It would have to be nighttime missions, though, otherwise we would be immediately spotted. One thing is for sure though, the more choices the player has to complete their mission, the better. This next one is from Abu Timmy who says he would like to change clothes to hide, so kill a soldier and put on his uniform. I love the stealth aspect in Sniper Elite and I do like this idea if it could be implemented without breaking the game. If you put on an enemy uniform so no one attacks you, surely it would make the game too easy. There are other games that let you do this, I know, but if you could just steal someone's uniform and walk around the map unobstructed, that would make things way too easy. I do have a few ideas as to how it could work though. One is instead of being undetectable whilst wearing an enemy soldier's uniform, maybe it would just decrease the distance that a soldier can spot you from. Or if you find an officer's uniform, that would decrease it even further. Two, we shouldn't be able to just wear any uniform. If you shoot or stab someone to death before taking their uniform, it should arouse too much suspicion and be ineffective because it's covered in blood. Maybe add a wire to our inventory system so we can strangle an enemy if we sneak up behind them. Strangling someone should take much longer than a melee kill, increasing our chances of being spotted. But only then could we recover a uniform not covered in blood. 3. If you are shot whilst wearing a uniform, it should get covered in blood and therefore you would need to find another uniform. That way a uniform would have limited use. 4. Could be some type of ranking system, whereby if you're wearing a sergeant's uniform, privates would ignore you. If you're wearing officer's uniform, sergeants and privates would ignore you. 5. As a way to make it harder to acquire a uniform, is to make it so the uniform has to fit. Using our binoculars could be a good way to find a soldier whose uniform Carl would be able to wear. Now these are just a few ideas off the top of my head. I don't claim to have all the answers. Maybe instead of all that, just have a particular mission where you're in disguise and have to remain hidden. I just think the idea of wearing a disguise to fool the enemies is a good one, but I don't know how they would do it without making things a little too easy. But if Rebellion could figure it out, then I believe it could be a cool addition to the game. Next up is a suggestion from DarkJedi351, whose comment I can no longer find to screenshot for some reason, but they said motorcycle machine gun sidecar patrols, and to this I say yes please. Currently we have armoured vehicles, boats and trucks, all of which stick to their preset path. I want Rebellion to give us some vehicles that can go pretty much anywhere to chase Carl down. The more varieties of enemies to deal with the better, and having these guys chasing you all over the map is something I would love to see. At the moment if we get into trouble we can just sprint away and as soon as an armoured vehicle loses sight of us they'll just sit there for a while before continuing along their preset path. Where's the thrill of the chase? But if you introduce motorbikes with machine gun mounted sidecars that can chase you around the map that would be awesome. 
Imagine hiding in a bush with one of these trying to find you. Instant death if you get run over. Oh, and if we can ride one ourselves and use a pole as a joust, well then that's just gravy. Next up, Shadow Reaper went into great detail about how he would fix the radio operators and reinforcements in the game, and I have to agree that they have huge potential that I feel so far has gone unfulfilled. As soon as the radio operator knows there is trouble, he should be calling in reinforcements immediately, but he won't call them in unless he is on red alert. All enemies in an entire area can be taken out while staying on yellow alert, therefore the radio operator is willing to watch everyone else around him die and still he won't call in reinforcements. A radio operator can quite literally watch his friend's head get blown off his shoulders and he still won't call in reinforcements simply because he doesn't know where you are. Make the radio man call for backup as soon as he hears a shot. As soon as he sees his friend's head get blown away, backup should be on its way. He shouldn't have to wait for the red alert. Also I feel reinforcements should change depending on the level of difficulty that is being played. Playing on cadet? Send in a few infantry. Playing on Authentic Plus? I want to see tanks. I want to see trucks full of Jaegers. Heck, let the radio operator call in reinforcements multiple times if he still hasn't been taken out. The radio operator is a great idea that was introduced in Sniper Elite 4. It's now time to tweak them and make them far more of a threat than they currently are. This next suggestion, and one I really agree with, is from Nifter71, who says, Regarding particular mechanics, Player use of both the Panzerfaust and the Flare Gun feel really awkward and could be greatly improved upon. Could not agree more with this one, that damn aiming arc for the Panzerfaust or the Flare Gun can be a nightmare to use accurately. The arc in general I find is just a bit of a pain. There have been many times when I'm hiding behind a wall in cover trying to aim something and it's just next to impossible to see where you're aiming it, often having to move whilst in cover just to get it over the wall. And sometimes the arc even says it will make it over the wall but ends up blowing up in your face. I know the arc turns red when aimed at an enemy and this is very useful, but often you have to stand up to be able to aim accurately, giving away your position. The aiming arc could really use a rework. Change the camera angle or something when we are trying to use it, so we can use our equipment more effectively. The next suggestion is from David Newman, who says, Inside the weapon wheel, just like choosing to throw a rock, an option could be available to pick up dry grass and drop it to see how fast the wind carries it. Now this is in response to my suggestion of making a harder difficulty, where I mentioned the possibility of removing the wind gauge and having to check the environment to judge the wind. My example to judge the wind ourselves was to see how hard the trees are blowing and in what direction, or maybe have flags about the level that are blowing in the wind. So. This um, wind zone, when you bring it in normally, it'll be set to directional. So if you rotate the object like you would with any object, it will affect the direction of which the wind is moving and which the tra trees or bushes do sway. But having an animation where Carl will grab some grass, dirt, sand, whatever, and drop it to see how far it moves to judge the wind is a great idea. I'm pretty sure most people won't be interested in making the game any harder, but for anyone who is, myself included, this would likely be a welcome addition. Finally, we have Hippie Hair, who says he would like to see more stealth kills like throwing knives. Now, as someone who plays primarily stealthy in Sniper Elite, one half of me would love to see throwing knives added to the game. An option for a ranged silent kill without suppressed ammo or sound masking is a great one, especially when I think about using it whilst an enemy is standing in a bush, killing and hiding their body instantly. But the other half of me isn't so sure. Yes, there are plenty of instances in movies and games where throwing knives are used, but I can find no evidence whatsoever of throwing knives being used during World War II. This is because they are so unreliable. The chance of actually causing instant death with a throwing knife is incredibly small, and that's if you manage to hit him with the blade and not the handle. But that's not to say there can't be other stealth kills. Personally, I'd like the ability to drop onto someone from height and assassinate them with my knife. One of the things I love about Sniper Elite is that it tries its best to stay historically accurate to World War II. Yes, some liberties are taken here and there to make the game more accessible or enjoyable, but throwing knives? The gamer in me loves the idea, but the Sniper Elite fan in me, not so much. 
Okay then, thanks for watching. I hope you found that interesting. Uh, let me know what you think of these viewer suggestions and be sure to leave any of your own Sniper Elite 5 suggestions in the comments section. Also hit that like button if you enjoyed this video. It really does help my little channel to grow. This is a dedicated Sniper Elite channel so be sure to hit that subscribe button to be kept up to date on all things Sniper Elite and I will see you guys in the next video. Red Fox, out. Brutal Barracuda, a Sniper Elite channel.